Namaskar and welcome to Startup Champions. This is the stage that brings together the best startup talents of the country. I'm Shubhendu Ghosh. Let's talk about the education sector. Well, India has a huge demographic advantage. The youth power is significant in the country, but with advantage also comes responsibility. The manner in which we're able to educate and skill uh, our youngsters, our youth will determine the direction that India will take in the coming years. Now, the new national education policy has created a framework for integrated learning, greater focus on technology and innovation. Well, with this pandemic, we've also learned the significance, uh, the potential of online learning. And now we turn to our startups uh, for their ideas, for their innovations, for their enterprises that can truly transform the education sector. Let me introduce you to the startups who are joining us today. First, we have with us Robot Guru Education from Mysuru. Harshwardhan, uh, founder, is joining us. Warm welcome to you, Harshwardhan. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. And our second startup, uh, Kickhead Softwares from Delhi. Prajwal, uh, co founder, is joining us uh, from the startup. Warm welcome to you, Prajwal. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And uh, like always, we have a fantastic set of audience members uh, uh, with us. So, warm welcome to all of you. They're young students, researchers, and also entrepreneurs themselves, it would be fantastic uh, to look forward to you engaging uh, with the startups on that side of the stage. Let's now talk about our mentor. Now, the mentor for this program is as important as mentors are in the startup ecosystem in the journey of any startup. Very excited to have with us Mr. Satya Narayana, uh, founder, career launcher. Mr. Narayanan, warm welcome to you. Uh, as we know, uh, you're the founder of the super successful educational uh, venture, career launcher. And today it is, in fact, one of Asia's foremost uh, education-related corporate. Mr. Narayanan, you're also a, a very, very uh, recognizable figure in the academic circles. You're a renowned speaker as well. And uh, you are the guiding force behind several education-related ventures, uh, which are known for their transformative potential in the whole of uh, Asian education uh, market. A warm welcome to you uh, into the program. Uh, let's look at uh, the manner in which the education sector in the country is evolving. We'll take a look at the manner in which uh, the National Education Policy 2020 has uh, widened the scope of learning uh, in the country. We'll also look at the ways in which education sector has become an exciting place for startups to be in. A special report. Modernizing the education sector of India is key to tackling the challenges of the 21st century. Improving all aspects of the education system is needed to empower the youth. Education that opens the minds of the students to the opportunities around. Education that can create job creators instead of job seekers. With a new education policy at place and greater than ever emphasis on skill development, startups have a crucial role to play in the sector. Government has proposed big reforms across primary education, higher education and technical education in the new policy. The the new education policy that has been introduced after 34 years aims to improve the overall quality of education. It seeks to ensure high education opportunities for all students. Introducing artificial intelligence, 3D machine, data analysis, biotechnology in undergraduate studies will help create more skilled youth. It will also boost their employability. According to a report, a rupee invested in primary education results 10 times more value in higher education. The new education policy takes integrated approach to arts, science, vocational courses and other streams. Vocational education will be introduced early from class 6 
with provision for internships. Students' progress can be evaluated by a national assessment center called Parak. Artificial intelligence software will be put to use in learning and training exercises. Clearly, it opens new doors of opportunities for the startups. Whether it is making online education simpler or introducing a disruptive technology, edutech startups are exploring possibilities offered by the sector. $200 billion market awaits the new edutech companies. There are over 4,450 edutech startups in the country. Amidst the pandemic, 2020 was an important year for the rise of edutech companies. Between Jan and September 2020, 76 deals were made with an investment of $1.4 billion. According to the economic survey, people in India want to spend more time on education as compared to health. In the past decade, edutech companies have transformed rapidly. In the beginning of 2021, Prime Minister Modi announced a seed fund worth 1,000 crores for startups. Government also announced easy availability of debt capital for startups. It means Startups India Mission is ready to give wings to aspirations of young entrepreneurs of the nation. Using technology, taking education to every individual is the biggest challenge facing the sector. All eyes on how startups will revolutionize education in 21st century India. Uh, so that's how uh, the education sector becomes an exciting place for the startups. If you can turn to our mentor uh, and get some initial thoughts. So Mr. Satya Narayanan, if, I, if we can have you on the uh, mentored wall. Right. Uh, so, sir, uh, the demographic advantage that India has makes the education sector particularly uh, dynamic. Uh, how do you think uh, startups today are, are poised uh, to take this transformation forward? I think the opportunity is exceptional. Uh, never have we seen this in the last 300 years, uh, Shubendu. And one of the fundamental principles around which this opportunity is getting leveraged or will be built is that today, if you build an tech or for that matter, any solution, you build for India that amounts to building for the world. It wasn't the case about a decade or two decades ago. And so when I look at uh, the work being done by whether it is Harsh or Prajwal, and when they are building something for India, uh, what what ha what's really happening is that the price performance equation that an Indian customer demands is it 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 uh, straddles highest performance standards because he's used to an Amazon and a Netflix kind of quality, and he wants the price of an Indian customer which is about one fifth or one tenth. So this is one important aspect. The second aspect is. Like you rightly said in the beginning, based on NEP, based on our, uh, you know, the message that we heard even from the Prime Minister, uh, the converting a youngster from a job seeker to a job creator, this is the other right. very important dimension uh, that you are touching upon when we are, uh, you know, advocating or supporting and, and encouraging young entrepreneurs like we have today on our program. Let's now begin with our first startup. Robot Guru Education. Now, this startup has revolutionized the manner in which uh, we teach and learn. Uh, from robots that can teach uh, to your curriculum converted into augment reality for better understanding and better engagement. No wonder uh, students, when they use their tools, are able to adapt, engage, and understand their subjects in a much, much better manner. Let's look at their wonderful journey. Yes. Welcome to Startup Champions. Robots. The word itself creates a fascinating image in your mind and takes you back to the world of sci-fi movies. Generally, Robotech is synonymous with tech-driven developed countries like the USA or Japan. But what if we tell you that a startup here in India is making 100% made in India robots? And these robots can not only walk and talk, dance and move, but do more than that, help you study. Imagine your favorite mentor or your favorite teacher from the world teaching this robot and then this robot teaching you in the class. When the whole world is talking about digital learning, this startup robot guru is talking about digital teaching. In the beautiful city of palaces, Mysuru brews a high-tech global startup, Robot Guru. 
that is breaking silos and creating a never seen before, never experienced before way of teaching and learning. Leaving his job in the Silicon Valley, USA, founder Harshvardhan Kikari came back to India to his hometown Mysuru in the hope of exploring his luck in startups and that too, a robo AI IT enabled virtual reality immersive reality high tech startup which will make teaching interactive and learning exponentially fun and that too with a robot in Guru Avtar. Robot, initially it was a student and now it has become a guru. So it has graduated. So that's why the name Robot Guru came in. It's almost like a teaching assistant. Supplement the real, real guru. Allows the teacher to digitally bring in various tools. Co-founder and wife Shweta Kikari recalls the move to take the leap of faith for a startup as a step that was motivated by passion for robotics and the vision of a new India. He wanted uh, you know, uh, to bring robotics to India because as we were in America, he had always felt that you know, the latest technology is always available in America. But by the time it comes to India, it is usually a few years late. So that's when we decided that we have to come back to India and start something here. Our 10-year-old uh, uh, kid, our son, he's already an intern of the, our uh, company. So he likes to learn the tools and uh, the uh, other th things that they are using in the company now. So yeah, it is like yeah, techie family, so you can say. What I would say is it is actually much riskier not to start a startup. Once we created the startup, we had 11 patents all around the world. Completely made in India product, which is now exported to 19 countries. Logging into just a website opens before the user a whole world of subjects, concepts and much more. The company has also brought in technologies like the Holo suit, which is a motion capture suit and can also control the robot. So this is the kind of motion which I wanted to capture. So there I saw that okay, Holo suit and Robot Guru is the right platform where I can build this kind of solution. Holo education will allow students to explore, interact, experience and be involved in something as if they are actually present in that environment. The grasping of the various concepts is made simpler using the computer, augmented reality and virtual reality integrated with Holo suit. With such high-end cutting-edge products, the startup has hired young minds at job and aims at promoting the trend of reverse talent migration. That is where like the local community came together. They only invested in this idea and they gave not just money, they gave their sons and they gave their daughters to work in this like company and like take this to the whole new level. The company has tied up with various universities and is helping teachers amplify their teachings. Opening up a new avenue to help practical education and enable learn by experience, Robot Guru is revolutionizing the conventional methods of teaching and learning with the digital teaching tools. It's a brilliant world of uh, Robot Guru education and uh, Harsha, founder, uh, is with us. Harsha, uh, great to have you. Uh, now, for a moment, uh, it seemed we were watching a science fiction uh, documentary, you know, with all those robots. Um, a lot of what you do uh, is virtual, uh, augmented reality. How did your engagement interest uh, in this particular field start and how did you connect it with education? Yes, so if you look at it like I was working at Microsoft Robotics and while building those robots, I was building humanoid type of robots. I was giving them arms, I was giving them legs, I was giving them eyes. So then I started thinking, okay, why not give them brains? Hmm. And then I started thinking, okay, what happens? Does the robot also dream, right? So what would a robot dream like? And that's where augmented reality, virtual reality is nothing but a shared dream between robots and humans. Are we talking about artificial intelligence where the robots can sense like human beings? Absolutely. In fact, this is the next level of artificial intelligence. Right now, artificial uh, intelligence is at the level of plants. You can only passively observe things. Okay. But if you look at Cambrian explosion, what happens? Like when you become like, when you get eyes and when you get legs, you can move around and interact and learn from the environment. Mm. Right? So that is the kind of advanced uh, 
uh, artificial general robotic intelligence we are talking about. Mm -hmm. It is almost embodied AI. It is not just the normal AI, but this is the next level of spatial embodied AI which we are talking about, which can come to you in the form of a robot and teach you like a guru. It's a lovely robot that we saw. Uh, it's called Hanuman. Uh, uh, yes, Harsh, that, uh, yes. So, so that, what all can it do, Harsh, if you can tell us? Yes, so that is actually a robot by SoftBank that we skilled using our Holosuit technologies to teach various um, um, aspects. For example, that robot paired with like a projector can actually teach you how you can actually go inside like a, a tractor and I think you saw some images as to how do you actually drive the tractor mm -hmm. or how do you make some karate moves, how do you actually play cricket strokes. In fact, the idea here is that the robot can learn from the teacher and it can basically teach you anything because it has ability to speak, mm -hmm. it has ability to see you, recognize you, come close to you, just like a real teacher would do. In mm -hmm. fact, the real teacher and this, this robot teacher would be counterparts, almost like Ram and Hanuman, right? That is why we came with the name of Hanuman bot. He's like an assistant to the real teacher. It's fantastic idea. Can we have an applause on that particular front? Uh, uh, Harsha, uh, but uh, you know, just to understand it simply, uh, a teacher takes so long in education, exams, training to become a teacher. How is a robot able to transform into a teacher in no time? How does that happen? So, you know, in our Hindu philosophy, there is a very co nice concept of avatar, right? So, mm -hmm. gods take these various avatars. So, our, um, uh, actually, our god, like our uh, house god is Narasimha, Lakshmi Narasimha, right? So, if you look at it, it is Nara and Simha, right? Mm -hmm. So, now, the way you look at this robot is not as a robot itself, but it is an avatar of the guru. Okay. Nara Yantramanava avatar. So, you can think of it as the guru is teaching this robot. So whatever this guru has taken for 30 years, 40 years, 80 years, that can actually be instantly transferred to this robot because the guru itself is teaching and coming in the form of the robot. So the so, teachings of the best teacher yes. can be used through this robot, through yes. Hanuman, yes. and be taken to remote corners of the country Absolutely. where, uh, which may not have access to good teachers. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. brilliant. On that note, uh, if you can connect to our mentor, uh, Satyanarayan, uh, the manner in which technology can be a game changer, the manner in which we need quality uh, teaching staff manpower in education, in that context, how do you see the journey of uh, Robot Guru Education? I think it could be exceptionally exciting. Uh, the, uh, the, needless to say, the marrying of the invention and the creative genius that we see in the team mm. here has to be married with the on-the-ground implementation 0 to 1 as Peter Thiel talks about and then 1 to 100 to scale it up. Uh, but that's the excitement of the journey that I see for the team. And, uh, you know, the, the rarest species, species to find in this world is a great teacher. And if, if there's any technology that can absorb the creative teaching genius of a good teacher, mm. and then we can replicate that, uh, it's a great service to the society. It's a great service to education. Uh, I, I, I personally think it's very exciting. And at the same time, I would also think it's a very, very challenging, lifelong journey that the, that the team is looking towards. Right, to right. Right, thank you for that input. Uh, also, uh, next, if we can take a look at the manner in which uh, your robots have become celebrity, Harsha. We got hold of some pictures and some clips of the manner in which uh, your, your robots are interacting with who's who, the world of politics and elsewhere. Let's take a look at that special clip about uh, where all has a robot gone and met. Let me also throw the podium open for audience members, uh, really engaging technology questions that you would have for Harsha. Hi, I'm Aditya. I have got a degree in psychology. I'm from the edutech background and I support students with their emotional counseling and career counseling. So I have a question for Harsha. Uh, Harsha, we have heard l how people are misusing uh, self-driven cars. They are putting it on autopilot and going off to sleep. How people are getting addicted. 
so my question to you is how would we ensure that the emotional connect is there and also sensitivity is there i know it's a very early question to ask but i would request for your thoughts thank you that's a great question in fact if i can just add to that uh, do your robot teachers also scold and punish like uh, usual teachers do <laughs> tell us about that so that's a very interesting question so the way to look at these things is the robot is an extension of the consciousness so whatever is the teacher kind of wants to do that just like whatever is like the uh, intent of the teacher hmm. the uh, like if you have a class monitor right if the class monitor is told to go and hit he will hit if the class monitor is told to kind of like praise the student he will praise hmm. so this robot and these technologies are things which are extending the consciousness of the teacher and it is not just the robot there is also augmented reality and because now we are actually able to capture this interaction between the teacher and the student through this intermediate platform we it actually allows us now an eye into this interaction because previously these things could have even happened but we would not know about it now technology opens up and allows us to understand peak and also maybe recommend best practices right so have an ai which basically if the teacher is scolding maybe it sensors out those things and then like passes it across right if the teacher says hit maybe he'll kind of go and just pat right so a lot of the things because now it is actually there is an intermediate layer which is there between the teacher and the student mm. who can help them significantly enhance so ultimately the way i look at things is it is the humans who have to take responsibility not the robots the technology can only help but it's up to us to use it judiciously right and students should find ways to become more friendly with the robot to escape scolding another question if you can take here uh, i'm siddhant varshne i'm a chemical engineer from iit delhi i'm a phd student uh, so i have one question although i'm i'm not from the the field but uh, this thing you have uh, talked about visualization which it it converts the data that it collects and converts it into the spatial uh, coordinates right but what about interpretation w what if some student asks a question to the robot will it be able to interpret it and w will it be able to like what kind of uh, ai uh, technique will it use to actually interpret it absolutely that is a great question so in fact we have developed some of the most sophisticated ai techniques mm. here which actually looks at let us say the student is asking a robot a question right of course it has all the basic skills of speech recognition and being able to understand have a Good. semantic understanding understanding of the context but let us say even with all this understanding and an ai kind of thing it is not able to answer the question it does not know what the answer is then what happens it the robot guru now becomes a robot student it will go and ask its teacher oh this time this question came in i did not know how to hmm. for example let us say the student will ask how should i hold a bat or like this particular circuit how should i connect if the robot knows it will actually tell them if the robot doesn't know it will now ask the teacher teacher this is the question and now the teacher once he teaches then it will remember forever because it's a perfect student so next time any 100 students will ask the same mm. question it will be able to teach them without actually disturbing the teacher so now you see that is where like a lot of the students will benefit because not right. all of them will get a chance to go and talk to the teacher right teacher's time is very valuable so the robots kind of purpose is to just reduce this traffic right it's like caching the information between the student and the teacher in such a way that not just that one if there are 100 such robots around right. in all the villages even all those robots instantly get this because it is not just one student it has many 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 multiple avatars so it can actually simultaneously transmit this knowledge and every one of those robots will be able to That's amazing uh, Harsha and uh, robots are not the only things that you've made you've yes. also created augmented reality using uh, holographic technology if I'm yes. right if you can tell us about it then we have something special for our audiences Yes so what we have created here is called so you might have heard about normal augmented reality virtual reality where you have to wear something and you have to kind of spend a lot of uh, time in this virtual world 
but the problem is like we could not really those are useful for practical mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. let's say you wanted to learn something individually or even if you have a mobile phone these are digital learning tools right but what we wanted to do was we wanted to help the teachers by creating digital teaching tools so what we created was a holographic projector which actually observes the teacher and allows the teacher to interact in 3D. Mm. Just like a mobile phone tracks your finger and allows you to interact in 2D, mm. what we are doing is we are actually tracking the entire teacher, virtualizing them and allowing them to control all of these, uh, whatever they are teaching. For example, let's say the teacher wants to teach about solar system. Great. They can actually zoom in, look at Mars and then start rotating the And let's the quickly Mars. take a look at how that works. Uh, a uh, special uh, clip we managed to get of your brand ambassador, Yuvraj Singh, and who demonstrates the manner in which this fascinating holographic technology works. Let's take a look. Because of COVID, the young children have not been able to come to cricket, cricket academies and practice. And they have been finding may, uh, ways and means to practice in the house or in the backyard. So I think when we discuss about Horosote, it gives an opportunity. It's a great innovation where it gives an opportunity where uh, your body movements are cap captured by the haptic sensor as we discussed and uh, you know you'll be able to uh, show uh, and present the young children about the body mechanics of sport so I think Holosuit technology will really help in education in sports when you see a coach in augmented or a virtual reality you're instantly able to rectify your mistakes. If you are going just playing in the nets or you're playing any other sport and you don't know what mistakes you're doing, you always have to look uh, for coaches to sort out your game. But here, the moment you give in your feedback on, on the application and you show your own videos, it would be very easy holographically to you know, rectify those mistakes. Well, that's ace cricketer Yuvraj Singh for you. It seemed like an ordinary conversation between Yuvraj and Harsh. What if I were to tell you that Yuvraj Singh was actually not present in that conversation? It was a holographic image. It looked absolutely real, Harsha. Fantastic uh, work. Uh, so tell us about that, the transformative potential of uh, such holographic uh, uh, video images of uh, teachers for that matter. Sure. So this is one area where like, this has a tremendous potential to especially in the COVID situation where the best of the teachers are not able to travel anywhere, mm. they can sit in their home and we capture all their body movements through our hollow suit. And hollow suit is just, I was wearing the hollow suit, believe it or not. Mm. That was the hollow suit. It's just like your normal jacket. Were you pack. also virtual yes, in that clip? Yes, I was also virtual. I was wearing oh, the hollow fantastic. suit in virtual. I think so, we should have a round of applause for this uh, amazing technology and making it real. Yes, sir. So using this technology now, the person can come in and especially we are putting it now on mobile robots. So you can, in fact, instead of me coming here, I could come there here virtually and I could move around and talk to every one of you and you are guests, for example. Are Satya you saying Naran? that yes. teachers, students, yes. everyone could come into the classroom yes. virtually at the time like a pandemic when Ab we couldn't go to physical classes? That's possible? Absolutely. In fact, what we are creating, you know, Android is an operating system okay. on mobile phones, right, which allows you to do digital learning. What we are creating is an operating world hmm. that is in 3D which you can go into any time, access using your computer, using your mobile phone or using the robot. Amazing. Harsha, let's get a perspective on that from our mentor also. Uh, Mr. Satyanaranan, if we can connect with you uh, on the mentor wall. Uh, now, uh, I want to ask this question in the context of uh, the new national education policy. There's a lot of uh, scope and provision for use of innovation and technology. And here we saw this uh, fantastic demonstration of augmented reality. How do you think that could transform the manner uh, teaching and learning happens in the country? I would uh, repeat the same, uh, Shubhendu. I think uh, it can be very transformational. Uh, there would be early adopters, mm. there would be laggards, but con considering the current situation and hugely uh, spiked uh, by COVID, all the, you know, the, the tendencies and the behaviors are towards embracing newer things because the business as usual has been disrupted massively. So it's, it's, a, right. it's a great time, great opportunity. Uh, and, and, and what is very important for an innovative startup like this is to make sure that they are 
not overstretching themselves and harsh has a great challenge of, of innovating and, and and getting the early adapters so that the virtuous cycle hmm. gets built yeah i think uh, there are many many mainstream institutions higher education institutions test prep companies uh, you know sports coaches it would be very interesting to catch some early adopters who then migrate themselves into this start using it so that you can start generating the positive word of mouth uh, again i would close by saying i'm very excited uh, at the same time if i were harsh i will also be uh, very careful and slightly nervous that we don't get carried away back to you right there uh, our mentor satyan arayanan uh, continues to uh, be with us harsha uh, one final point i wanted to ask you uh, about we saw the fantastic innovations but what is your business model how does that work into a profitable venture who are your customers if in brief you could tell us about it sure so we have customers in 19 countries around the world so in fact yes 19 countries so for example softbank is our customer fiat ford in fact uh, we have kind of shipped uh, uh like this made in india technology to israel and japan and uh, the idea here is anybody who wants to train any worker for mm. example fiat and ford they are using it to train their factory workers like you saw yuvraj singh training his cricketers we have many universities right from first standard believe it or not right from first standard to phd students they have all come across and we right. have many world bank funded projects which we are executing in various kind of like uh, universities for example there is a tamil nadu university agricultural university where you saw how the tractors were being shown similarly in tamil nadu veterinary university tanu was they are using this to kind of teach cattle anatomy to the students using okay. this technology so uh, in fact we really encourage all the educational institutes to come and uh, really work closely with us because this can significantly help you adopt digital teaching tools so our customers are not uh, directly the students what we are targeting are the mentors the teachers the schools the colleges the coaching institutes who really need better tools so, and that brings us uh, to the second startup of the day we're talking about brilliant startups in the education sector we're talking about kickhead uh, softwares now what kickhead does uh, is it makes uh, learning management systems it also uh, makes online test platforms uh, around 1 million students are connected to them so if you're a youngster uh, looking uh, for a question paper a mock paper to uh, prepare for an examination if you're looking for a scholarship to take uh, your education journey forward or if you're someone who's looking for a job in private or government sector kickhead software could in fact uh, map uh, your skills your requirements and connected with the uh, opportunities that are available let's look at the special journey of kickhead software breaking out of their comfort zones and striving to make an impact a group of more than 10 kickheaders started kickhead softwares in 2014 a company that helps the student community across india it all started back in 2014 with a small facebook group there were lot of students who uh, needed career guidance who did not know how to prepare for jobs whether it was government or private so i created a small group and uh, people started joining in soon it grew to about 60000 members and and i knew that you know there's a lot of requirement that is there's a lot of gap between uh, the industry and the students and that is when uh, we came up with our products spread out in noida and bangalore the company assists students aspiring for government as well as private jobs with the founders having worked at companies like tcs mcafe and intel security they decided to merge content with technology and provide free of cost mock tests to students this process involves two very important factors first is the notification the official notification that is released by the various exam conducting bodies gives an idea to the team about the latest pattern and the difficulty level of the exam for which they have to prepare the mock test uh, second is the constant feedback that the team gets uh, of the students through the various social media platforms also through emails and calls that the students keep on connecting with us 
Their platforms govjobadda.org, amigos and placementyogi.com act as catalysts for those who dream of earning a well-paid job. They also have a YouTube channel. We have impacted over 6 lakh students through our work. Every day more than 500 students sign up on our platform and more than 100 tests are attempted. With more than 1 million students attached with Kickhead softwares across all their portals, it is only fitting to say that Young India is embracing the amalgamation of education and technology and striving towards making India into Atmanirbhar Bharat. That's the journey of Kickhead softwares uh, for you, ladies and gentlemen. And Prajwal, co-founder, continues to be with us. Warm welcome again, Prajwal. Thank you. Uh, uh, it, it's quite brilliant how you put together all the significant content that a youngster requires, whether it's a mock paper, uh, a scholarship information, or even a job opening uh, onto uh, one platform. You know, usually when one is looking for such information, one would just go online and search for that uh, particular need. But you put it all together. What is it uh, that you do differently as compared to a simple online search? See. Uh, most of the times when you search anything on Google or uh, any other platform, the thing is you get a lot of information. Yes. And sometimes what happens is when you get a lot of information, it is very difficult to figure out which is genuine, which is not. Right. Right? That is where we've come into the place where, you know, when students are looking, uh, uh, trying to, uh, let, let's say, search for scholarships. So if they go and search on Google, they'll get a lot of uh, uh, scholarships available and they would not know, you know which one to apply. Also, as a student, uh, it's not possible for you to go and search every day for scholarships or any other uh, stuff that you are in need of. What should happen is, ideally is that if there's a scholarship out in the market and uh, the scholarship could actually find the people who should be eligible for that, right? And then it tells you that, okay, uh, you are eligible for this scholarship and if you apply through this, then uh, your chances are uh, very high of getting selected. So this is what we try to do. We try to map what is available in the market and uh, put it across to the students in a very simple and easy way so that they can they don't have to search and go to different places and, and figure out the information that they need. What is uh, great that I learned about uh, uh, your portal, your software, uh, Prajwal, is that it's free for students yes. uh, uh, mostly. Uh, so help us understand how do you make revenue? What is your business model of uh, Kickhead Software? So uh, we, as, as you said, we are an LMS company. So we do have uh, businesses who use our softwares. When we created this uh, portal, it was a product that we had and uh, big organizations like Vajra uh, and Ravi, which is the largest UPSC coaching center in India, or Kiran Prakashan, again, the largest publisher of uh, books for government exams, they are our customers, they use our uh, portals as well and they, they are the ones who... Can you give an example of in what manner do they use your so, portal? Uh, we have our online, online test platform which uh, people use and we have an LMS where you know you can manage your students as well. That is how we are doing it. But that's, that, that's the public deployment, that's the B2C deployment of our product. The, B2, the same software could be used in B2B as well. Mm -hmm. So for example, Vajra YS has around uh, 8 to 9 lakhs of students uh, connecting with them across India through our uh, work that we have. So this is where we help them as well. And then again, since uh, they are an organization and they are using our software, but we right. use the same software, uh, we tweak it in, a, in such a way that it becomes easy for uh, students directly to use that as well as an open platform. And that is uh, you know, how uh, we, we generate revenue and we are able to sustain and we are able to uh, give uh, students content free of course as well. Amazing. And let's get a perspective uh, from our mentor uh, as well. Uh, uh, Satya Narayan, we've, especially in the last year of the pandemic, we've seen uh, uh, a number of education apps, education portals uh, uh, coming up. They've become increasingly important. Uh, with so many varieties available, how do you see Kickhead softwares differentiating themselves from the journey? See, testing as an area whether it is testing for practices purposes or it's testing for the real conduction of the examination, hmm. that has uh, come under tremendous amount of focus because now it was not a desire, it was not a desirable thing. It was a, it was a mandatory thing, it was a necessary thing. You know, in a country like India with a young population, students are taking exams and testing all the time, which are conducted by these neutral examination conducting bodies, whether it is a uh, you know, UPSC exam that uh, Prajul was talking about or a CAT or a NTA is conducting a bunch of exams, right. IIT, JE, need. So there are a whole lot of exams that are happening. And in order to cater to the performance of the student's preparation, there has to be a mechanism in where they can practice 5x or 10x the number of tests so that they are prepared for it. So it's a 
it's a very uh, sunrise sector it's been there for long as long as the entrance exam have been there however now it has become hugely uh, central and important because without technology we would have been completely uh, uh, what should i say immobilized uh, we would we were immobilized in the in the covid era it's a great opportunity and again i would repeat the same thing that i mentioned in the earlier segment that if uh, prajwal and his team are able to prove the unit economics scalability stickiness of this in on the indian landscape i think there is a there is a lot more much bigger opportunities that awaits them even outside of india it could be stage 3 but nevertheless it's important to think of those things because you need capital to raise you need capital to sustain and you need proof of concept and revenues and profitability to build a long term enterprise right uh, important uh, food for thought there uh, thank you uh, uh, satyanarayan we'll keep connecting with you uh, in the course of the program prajwal important points to be uh, taken there yes. by what the mentor had to say uh, you know uh, quite frankly uh, your startup reminds me of a good friend who would help you out with all the scholarship related information or mock test related information jobs related information how did you think of starting with it as a student what was your journey like did you have easy access to such information that motivated you to create a startup a portal like that in fact it was really tough uh, you know back in uh, 2010 when i graduated uh, it was very difficult to find impo important information online mm. even if uh, let's say there was tcs or infosys coming into our campus we had to you know if we had to prepare for that it was very difficult because we had to call our seniors or uh, friends who you know where companies had visited earlier and we, do, we had to ask them what kind of questions are coming hmm. uh, you know uh, in the papers or if we had to appear for a government exam we had to talk to somebody who has already cleared it and hmm. then ask them what kind of questions are being asked now we have to simplify that it should not be that difficult finding a scholarship is probably still the one of the difficult you know most difficult things uh, online because You, there are so many scholarships, and you don't really know how many of uh, them you are eligible for, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you get that? So mm -hmm. this is, uh, you know, we face a lot of issues, and that is, uh, you know, when and we we had a lot of issues with, you know, uh, uh, getting mentorship from us, our seniors as well. How the right. industry is like is something that students are not aware of. You know, what ki kind of work is being done exactly in the industry? It's very difficult for a student to understand. So that is when what I did was uh, back in 2014, we created a small Facebook group, and uh, you know. students used to ask kind of what kind of mm. questions they should uh, study what kind of books uh, they should refer to and what you know what, what how is the industry working and we started guiding them and that group started growing uh, you know quite rapidly and it it has uh, around 62000 members as of now wow. and so and a platform of conversation became uh, the foundation of your exactly. startup exactly let's get some questions from our audience members too uh, there are many of them researchers uh, i'm sure curious about uh, scholarships as well your question i am anupam choudhary Uh, pursuing phd in the department of textile and fiber engineering iit delhi so technology has its own set of its uh, advantages and disadvantages so most of the universities at this point of time have moved to online education like online examination systems so but the major concern uh, mostly is the uh, at many times there is some malpractices which have been uh, like in the written examination so being adopted by most of these students or something like that so how can a technology help in carving such malpractices which should not take should, should not even take place taken place during examinations absolutely so that's a great question in fact you know uh, when we were we were building the uh, software uh, we had a provision where what if you <coughs> needed proctored uh, examination right to be taken online so what we did was we uh, had a, a, a lot of features where a lot of security okay. features you know when we started we uh, we knew that there was a problem when students take uh, any quiz or any uh, test online and and marks and uh, you know credits are associated with that exam hmm. uh, we had to make sure that students are not able to cheat and that is when we came up with a lot of security features for example when the test opens it it goes full screen you won't be able to move out and you won't be able to switch tabs the moment you try to you know press certain keys uh, which tries to minimize the screen mm. you will not be able to do or if you are you know somehow able to do that the, the moment the screen goes out of focus uh, the whole application will close and your okay. test will get automatically submitted so these are a few things also it takes uh, you know at the uh, beginning of the test there is a feature where uh, it will show you a camera and it will say that okay we are going to capture certain screenshots at certain intervals from uh, you know uh, of yours and that will be sent to uh, the server mm. so whenever we see that you know somebody has uh, 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 has been able to you know get certain marks which uh, which has not been in the history of that mm. student 
So we, uh, you know, approach and we see the whole recording of the uh, test which has been taken. Right, and, then and these tech interventions, it, it works for the benefit of the students so yes. that they can actually uh, uh, work and uh, appear for the test as they would in a in a real situation. Exactly. Right. It, and also, it you know, it's, it's a timing factor also. Sometimes when you are conducting a test, uh, let's say you have an MCQ test, the problem is that students might uh, tell somebody else to, you know, uh, search online and get you the answer. So what we did was when we are, you know, uh, we, when the time is actually important also and the, we don't want students students to search all these things online mm -hmm. what we did was we introduced a timer on every question so you get 10 15 30 seconds and mcq is a very you know great way to right. uh, and to see whether somebody has uh, enough knowledge in that field or not so in 10 seconds you cannot search online but you if you you know the answer you know you will be able to obviously select that so this is these are some of the things that great. we have important in interventions our software. another question if you can have from the audience members anyone i am neeraj mandlekar i am a postdoc researcher in united Delhi and I have a very general question this kickhead uh, software is it available on uh, on mobiles like on Android or in different languages and how how does it like identify that the user is like the age group wise is it possibility to to search like this Yes. What platforms and varieties? Yes. Are so uh, we have two uh, applications, which is the the first one is Govjabada, which is focused on students preparing for government exams. So we have a lot of mock tests there based on the latest pattern that is uh, you know uh, in the market. So we create mock tests on that. So that application has around uh, five and a half lakh students registered on that as well. Now we also started Amigos, which is again a you know a different kind of a social network for students. No, when you when you think about social network, the problem is that you think about uh, Facebook or TikTok, you know, where uh, students generally spend uh, waste their time, right? But we came up with a software where you know, the moment a student uh, installs the application, it asks which college you are from, which mm. uh, branch you are from, you know, which degree you are pursuing, and then it immediately tells you that okay, these are your college mates. You can connect with them, and on the platform itself, uh, it's an again an Android application, so you get a lot of. Uh, you know, mock tests also for placements. You got a lot of uh, uh, mock tests for higher studies on the same platform. It has a lot of uh, competitions which are happening on the platform itself. Live quizzes are happening every day. So every day we conduct four live quizzes, and, and to keep the students interactive and interested in the platform, we do give out prizes as well. So every day we, you know, we give out prizes, prizes to the top ten uh, winners of each of the test. Mm. So this keeps them interesting, uh, interested in the platform, and and this is, uh, you know how we are able to engage with the students we give them content we give them uh, the ability to connect with each other when he, when he mentioned that you know we have one of the strategies is connecting people so this is what we are trying to do and we are trying to make a make a useful social network right not just uh, an application where you go and entertain yourself let's it also look at the manner in which students are benefiting uh, from this revolutionary uh, portal uh, we managed to speak to some of the students who benefited prajwal uh, from kickhead softwares let's take a look at what they had to say मेरे पापा हमेशा चाहते थे कि मैं कोई गवर्नमेंट जॉब ज्वाइन करूं तो जैसे ही मैंने मेरा ग्रेजुएशन खत्म हुआ मैंने रिसर्च करना शुरू किया कि अलग अलग कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स के बारे में कि गवर्नमेंट एग्जाम्स कौन सी कौन सी होती है कैसी कैसी होती है कहाँ पढ़ना चाहिए तो काफ़ी लोगों ने मुझे सजेस्ट किया चाहे ऑनलाइन पढ़ो कोचिंग जाना ज़रूरी नहीं है तो फिर मुझे एक दो फ्रेंड्स जिन्होंने ऑलरेडी एग्ज़ाम क्रैक कर चुके हैं उन्होंने मुझे सजेस्ट किया कि गवर्नमेंट जॉब अड्डा का प्लेटफॉर्म जाओ वो ज़्यादा सही है तो मैंने गवर्नमेंट जॉब अड्डा के साइट पे गया और लिटरली आपको सारी कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स की जानकारी उस पर डिटेल में मिलेगी कोई अपडेट्स आते हैं तो वो आपको तुरंत मिलेगी उस पर सारे मॉक टेस्ट हैं अलग अलग एग्जाम्स के जैसे नियर्स से भी होता है नाबार्ड होता है जैसे सी जी एल आई जो भी एग्ज़ाम्स होती हैं आपको सारी डिटेल्स उस पर मिलेगी उसके सारे मॉक टेस्ट मिलेंगे आपको फ्री में भी मिलेंगे तो मैंने फ्री मॉक टेस्ट से स्टार्ट किया और लिटरली जब मैंने सच में ए की एग्ज़ाम दी क्योंकि मेरा मेन टारगेट ए था तो उनके एग्ज़ाम पैटर्न जो है मॉक टेस्ट था वो ऑलमोस्ट सेम है जो रियल में एग्ज़ाम होती है ए की मैंने अपने टेस्ट सीरीज की तैयारी गवर्नमेंट जॉब अड्डा से की हुई है जो कि बिल्कुल मुफ्त है उसके जो भी टेस्ट सीरीज थे वो रेलवे के पैटर्न के हिसाब से बनाए गए हैं जो मेरे लिए बहुत ही यूजफुल साबित हुआ Student beneficiaries of KKET software is really transforming lives uh, uh, with your uh, with your portal. Uh, Prajwal, uh, what is this bond that you share with students who benefited? Uh, there's this person we just heard. Uh, he was appearing for railway examinations, then he got a job, and then he's uh, sharing his experience. 
Do they stay in touch? Yes, uh, you know, a lot of the times they do stay in touch and, you know, they keep us telling how has been their experience and how, you know, a, a, a lot of times people like these call up, call us up when, you know, the results are out and they say that thanks a lot for the, uh, you know, uh, mock test that you had on, our, on, on your platform and that is, uh, you know, that is what real success is for us, you know, when you are able to impact somebody and we, when, when they are spending time on our mock test, we understand that it is their time which is very important. So mm. we have to make sure the quality is very good. The content is the king. That is what we have to understand. At the end, uh, technology is great. Mm. It is, but it is just a facilitator. At the end, the, the content should be helpful uh, to the students, and that is what we try to focus on. We we get calls from students uh, at 2 a.m. also sometimes. So they call you up for yes, inquiries. and they say that okay, uh, there's an exam coming up in the next two three days, and uh, you know if we could create a mock test for that and and uh, help them you know crack that. Right. So that happens a lot of the time. Students call us up uh, asking for. You know, uh, 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 for example, uh, let's say a, f a few years ago, uh, there was a guy from, you know, who, who was a, a guard at, at an ATM, right? Oh. And this guy called me up and uh, there were certain mock tests which were paid also at that time. And he said, sir, uh, can you give us some discount on, uh, you know, on these things? And I said, See, I cannot take money from you, right? It would be much better, you know, I'll just give you free access to that. So I started giving free access to that. and. A lot of students kept on uh, asking uh, uh, such things also, and I understood that students do not have a lot of money. Mm. You have to understand it. When I was a student, I did not have a lot of money. I, you know, I used to spend around 30 days every day, uh, 30 rupees every day, just to have my food, and that was the limited amount that I had with myself. So, right. uh, you know, at that time, if I had to pay 500 rupees for a mock test, I would not have paid. You're and this that wonderful is what I senior that we all hope for, you know, to get the right information and get the support to move ahead in career. Prajwal, uh, also very briefly, if you can tell us about, you said content is the king. What is the source of your content? You create a, a, a platform, but where does the verified content come from? How do you manage that? Yes. So we, we ourselves have a, a, you know, a solid team which has experience in these uh, exams. Sure. So uh, when I uh, would talk about my background, I, you know, I initially went into TCS and then moved to McAfee and Intel uh, later. So I have uh, people in my team who have, you know, cracked IBPS exams and, and uh, s some of them are uh, POs as well and they help us. We have a lot of freelancers mm -hmm. who are students who are preparing for exams and they are sharp. They have cleared their first or second level pre and mains examinations and we, uh, you know, we have our openings there. So if they apply and they say that I, I, they say that I can, uh, you know, create a uh, mock test for you. And our team's responsibility is to, you know, figure out that the content, the quality is okay. very good. So that's so the manner in which you uh, yes. uh, go about taking care of the content. Uh, if we can uh, connect to uh, Satya Narayanan, uh, uh, you've been listening to the journey and the experiences of uh, KKAT Software, Satya Narayanan. Uh, from your own experience of uh, creating a super brand-like career launcher, what would you say to kickhead softwares uh, about uh, the road ahead and going forward? How must they prepare for the challenges that they in particular are likely to face? I would uh, uh, keep it perhaps uh, very, very simple. One, one point uh, uh, advice or uh, insight, if I may say so, which is uh, uh, customer word of mouth. I think uh, education as a business is 90% uh, about customer word of mouth. You can have a massive unending amount of marketing dollars, but if the customer was experiencing, like, you know, the two boys who came in and then they took the name of uh, the brand government job at Da and clearly endorsed it, uh, no amount of marketing money uh, can bring that kind of credibility. I think. Uh, like again, Prajwal was mentioning, technology is critical but incidental. Content also is extremely important. Uh, however, the outcomes that the students see in their lives and the word of mouth that it generates, I think that's the sharp focus uh, that if maintained by the startups, they always will have a great future. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are always very integral part of an entrepreneurial journey but no mistake is ever going to be more costlier than shortchanging the customer. Stay focused on that, rest of it will be fine. I think that advice would work for uh, Kickhead Softwares and also other startups uh, who are operating yes. in this sector. Uh, and finally, uh, before we uh, let our uh, startups go today, uh, Harsha, Prajwal, uh, from the journey that you've had so far to the climbing the ladders of success, what is that mantra, what is that uh, 
core learning that you would like to share with uh, young startups, entrepreneurs watching this program? Harsha, if I can start with you. I would say keep dreaming and keep inspiring. These are the two things I think. Uh, robots can do everything, but only humans have the power to inspire and also to get inspired. So Amazing. And uh, I'll suggest that, you know, focus on customers and your users. Their feedback, feedback is probably the most important thing that you can, uh, you know, get in the whole industry. So uh, what they are saying is absolutely right. Most of, you know, in, in almost all the cases, because uh, they, they have used your product. And if they are giving a genuine feedback, that is to help you improve only. So critical uh, reviews also are very helpful because you know when you see something and uh, see, see that, okay, this is not up to that quality or this feature is not working properly, when you focus on that, at, at least 100 other people would have felt the same and they would appreciate it. So uh, focus on customers and their reviews. That's very important. Right. Uh, great advice uh, from the bright startups. If you can put our hands together uh, for them. And uh, as we come towards the conclusion of this program, uh, let's take a look at the kind of impact that Startup Champions is already having. Startup Champions has not only given us a huge set of audience, but also a huge platform and exposure. Also, we have started receiving various calls and emails from people having similar interest. And we have also started working on team expansion with them. Apart from this, we have started receiving interest from farmers who are ready to grow aloe vera for us. Thus, Startup Champions has not only given us a huge platform expand, uh, exposure, but has also given us a huge community outreach. So all the best wishes to all the startups who are joining us, all the startups uh, that are operating in the country. Uh, Harsha, Prajwal, thank you very much for joining us uh, today in the program, sharing your story. Uh, thank you very much. A special thanks to you, Satya Narayanan, uh, for being the mentor, for guiding and uh, giving uh, the crucial set of advice uh, that you gave to our startups and all the entrepreneurs watching this program. And a big thanks to our bright audience members, researchers, students, and entrepreneurs who joined us today. A round of applause for all of you, if you can do that at this point. And with that, uh, we conclude this edition of Startup Champions. But this journey of inspiration, this journey of learning will continue next week. We'll see you again with new startups from a new sector. We'll take your leave for now. Namaskar. For feedback and to connect with any of the startups featured during the program, please write to us at startup.india at gov.in.